Today it's going to be Bernie Sanders for the Democrats up against Tulsi Gabbard for the Republicans. This was suggested to me in the comments, and right off the bat, this is a very difficult matchup. Tulsi Gabbard used to be a Democrat, she left the party. Now she seems more closely aligned with the Trump crowd. She's anti-war, she's anti-woke. I'm not sure where she's going to stand on every issue, but I think she's more populist than your establishment Republican. But it's tough to say where she's going to fall. Plus, she's going to get completely maligned and smeared in the media, and that's going to be used to detract from the issues. But I think she would generally have some populist appeal. But it's hard to say if she would completely be able to overcome the negative portrayal and win over enough voters in the middle. I think she would do pretty well with the Trump base. Not as well as Donald Trump. Some voters are going to be skeptical of her. Most Democrats probably want nothing to do with her at this point, but I think there will be some that would be willing to cross over. And as for Bernie Sanders, I think his popularity was at its peak back in 2016 and a little bit after that. Since then, he's not been willing to really go up against the establishment as much as people would like him to, but I think he generally would have some populist economics. That's going to help him out a lot. At cultural issues, I'm sure he's going to talk about abortion. That's going to be his big issue. I'm sure that would help him. But there's so many other issues out there, it's hard to say exactly what type of campaign he would run, how much he would want to shake up the system at this point, and how much the media would actually try to smear him in this matchup. That's all very hard to say, so I had a hard time on a lot of these states. I think for the most part, the map would be the same. Some of the margins would be a little bit narrower, but let's go through these states. We'll start in Alaska. That, I think, will be safe for Tulsi. Hawaii, that's going to go safe for Sanders. I know Tulsi Gabbard was in the U.S. House from Hawaii. I think she would do better there than almost every other Republican, but not enough to overcome the lean of the state. Back up to the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California. Those are going to be safe for Bernie. The next state is Nevada. This is a close one. It could go either way. In the end, I settled on a tilt for Bernie. Iowa and Utah, safe for Tulsi. Let's go to Arizona. That state likes its establishment Republicans. I think Sanders would probably be viewed as too far to the left. Of course, it depends what kind of campaign he runs. But I have this going as a leans for Tulsi, probably one to three points. Montana, Wyoming, safe for Tulsi. Now we've got Colorado. This is tough. I think it would definitely go to Sanders. The margin, I have it as under 10 points, probably about 9, likely for Bernie. New Mexico, that's about 4.5 points, leans for Bernie. North and South Dakota, safe for Tulsi. Nebraska at large, safe for Tulsi. The 2nd District, tilt for Bernie. Kansas, Oklahoma, safe for Tulsi. Texas will stay over 5 points, likely for Tulsi. Let's go to Minnesota. I think in this matchup, this could actually get under 5 points, but it's still going to go to Bernie by a lean margin. Iowa, likely for Tulsi. Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, safe for Tulsi. Let's go back up to Wisconsin, another very tough state. Bernie, I think, would have been strong here definitely in 2016, probably in 2020, in 2024, and going up against Tulsi, I think it would be very competitive, tough to say how it would go. In the end, I settled on a tilt for Tulsi. Illinois, safe for Bernie. Let's go to Michigan. Another tough call. You can make a case however you'd like. I settled on a tilt for Bernie. Indiana, safe for Tulsi. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, safe for Tulsi. Let's go down to Florida. I think Bernie Sanders would probably be painted as a socialist. That's not going to work in South Florida. So I do have this going just over 10 points. Safe for Tulsi. How about Georgia? This is another state that I think they would prefer an established Republican or a, more of a centrist Democrat. Bernie is likely going to be viewed as too far to the left. Georgia still has some potential to be a red state. And in this matchup, I do have it going to Tulsi by a one to two point lean margin. South Carolina, safe for Tulsi. North Carolina, leans for Tulsi. Let's jump up to Ohio. That is going to be likely for Tulsi. West Virginia, very safe for Tulsi. Let's go to Maine at large. This is an interesting state. Leans for Bernie. The first district, that's safe for Bernie Sanders. The second district, I have that is safe for Tulsi Gabbard. I think both these candidates would do very well in each of those districts, but on opposite ends of the populist scale. Next state, New Hampshire. Very tough call. I went back and forth on it. Eventually, I settled on a tilt for Bernie. Now we've got Bernie's home state of Vermont. It's going to obviously go safe for him. Then it's New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. All safe for Bernie Sanders. Now we've got Pennsylvania. 
And this is another one you could go either way on. I tried to think about it, and I settled on a tilt for Bernie. And the last state is Virginia, and in this matchup, this gets competitive. Both of these candidates, I'm assuming, would be outsiders in the northern Virginia suburbs. They're not going to be huge on someone like Bernie Sanders, but he would still win enough of the votes statewide, and it would go lanes for Sanders. And there's your final map, and that comes out to 272 for Tulsi Gabbard, 266 for Bernie Sanders. So this is an extremely tight matchup. I think it could easily go either way, depending on what the issues are at the time, the national environment, the running mates, any kind of serious scandal that develops, all that's going to affect these states by one or two points, and it's completely up for grabs. So I said a lot at the beginning, but both of these candidates should be viewed as outsiders. That's going to make it hard for the media to figure out who to go after. But of course, that's assuming Bernie Sanders actually runs as an outsider, and he does not cozy up to the establishment. Tulsi Gabbard, same thing, but I think there's less of a concern for her. Sanders is probably going to get a lot of the progressives out, but I don't think as much as he would have five years ago. Tulsi Gabbard, there's a little bit more question as to what her coalition would be. I think it would be enough of the Trump voters, enough voters that are anti-war. But there would be a good battle going for voters in the middle that want to hear some populist economics along with some populist cultural appeal. And both of these candidates have some strengths with some of these issues. So I think what their specifics are on the given issues, that would play a role and that could tip the scales. Access to health care, wages, workplace safety, the environment, those are going to help Bernie Sanders in some states. I think crime, immigration, free speech maybe even education, that would probably help Tulsi a little bit more. But again, there's a lot of nuance with a lot of these issues. Plus, there's a whole slate of other issues. It's hard to be very specific in this kind of a matchup. They're both strong candidates in their own right. They both have some potential drawbacks. Another one for Bernie is he's kind of old at this point. That could be a problem for him. Again, Tulsi Gabbard used to be a Democrat. That creates some question marks as well. Some of you might say there's no chance Bernie would lose this thing. He's an absolute legend. Yeah, maybe. And some of you might say Tulsi Gabbard, she's a total rock star. She would do much better than this. Yeah, I hear you on that too. It's tough to say. I see it being almost right down the middle. You might have a different take. You might emphasize different things. That's fine, but this is what I settled on. Let me know in the comments, how would your map be different than this? And do you think this would be an absolute epic matchup if it actually happened? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video.